welcome you to the 12th training session in asymmetric spiritual warfare and prayers and i just want to say this you know this is the last one of the training the ones that are weekly this is going to be the last one and those who finish and you know show evidence they finish by the blogging that goes on and they do a simple test we're going to you know give them a, 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 a recognition that they did this training look at the glory of the lord that during the period of lockdown, the Lord was able to raise intercessors at another level. Uh, so what we're going to do as a way of just uh, settling in so that others can settle in and join us, um, Destiny will um, do some, you know, of what he does best on keyboard and they let me back him up just about three minutes while we settle in and make sure that everybody's in the class so that we can go on. Today's training is very important. Okay, Destiny, are you ready uh, to take us through? Go ahead, okay? Let's see, look.
Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Destiny, thank you. You can go and get your rest. Amen. Uh, wonderful. Brothers and sisters, this is uh, a very wonderful time. You have no idea like a woman with pregnancy going to deliver today, so to say. These 12 sessions will round up today. And if you blog along with all the 12 videos, we're going to certify that we, take, we took you to a training of this nature at this time. This is the 12th training in Asymmetric Spiritual Warfare on Saturday, June 27. We've come to the end of the training session. A few things need to be tied up to perfect our learning and experience in Asymmetrical Spiritual Warfare. And brothers and sisters, I know that those who are on the audio line, they, they seem to be a little bit uh, needing our attention. So let's see that we attend to them, make sure there's no noise on the line. Brothers and sisters, listen to this. Asymmetric spiritual warfare is the key to the end of the age. Even in the world, most things that they are doing, militaries of the world are no longer planning conventionally. A few days ago, United States of America took out one of the major enemies in the battlefield. It was a new type of weapon that had not been used. As the weapon approaches its target, it releases six blades. And it's so pinpoint that even somebody who is in a car, he can take out the passenger and leave the driver. And pinpoint, it goes in there, the six blades go out to make sure they don't miss. That's asymmetric warfare. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says the enemy cannot outwit us. Yeshua said, we'll be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. What was he talking about? He's going to bring us up to the place where the enemy cannot case us. Because the enemy is used to conventional things. And he is not uh, omniscient. He is not omnipresent. His knowledge is limited. So with that limited knowledge, he tends to wait for us in a particular way. He tends to plot in a particular way. And the Lord is going to raise intercessors in the end of the age who are able to outwit him, who are able to outfox him, who are able to beat him in his own game and rout his forces. This is what it's all about. And that's what the Lord has been training us in a holistic sense. So that anywhere you are, you can haul stones with the right and the left hand like the armies of David in 1 Chronicles chapter 12. They could fight with both hands and they had understanding of the times. They knew what Israel ought to do. They kept rank. That was an asymmetric army. Who were they? Some of them were people who were owing tax. Some of them were people who had no name. Some of them were people who people wrote off. But David brought them together, trained them by the Spirit, deployed them, and nobody could withstand them. I believe that's what the Lord wants to do. We're going to not just degrade coronavirus and fight it and, and eliminate it by the grace of Elohim, we're going to also take apart everything Satan has constructed to make this journey to eternity a difficult one for his people. And so please pay attention. A few things we want to share with you. I'm going to go straight to them. Father in heaven, by your spirit, speak to us right now and grant us understanding. Help us to come to a place where we receive these principles and walk in them. So your name is exalted in Yeshua's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to say something. Today's lesson, you can distribute it. So as we're speaking, go to the top right corner of uh, the, the screen and you see three dots. Three dots, click there, it comes up. See where it says copy link, copy the link, post it in groups, post it in anywhere you are. This one we have released so that we can, if you do that right away, the people can follow the training right away, whatever they may be. Post it on your page. Today's own is declassified. Last week's own was classified, classified because only those who ought to know uh, were in the know of what we're talking about. And that's part of asymmetricness. Coming to a place where information is not for everybody. It's on the need to know. And brothers and sisters, that's why the Lord is talking to us today. Number one principle. I'm going to talk about 12 or so, you know, fundamental principles you can never do without them. Number one is maturity today. Maturity. What does it mean? We need to grow beyond babyhood. This is because babyhood is about selfishness. 
Babyhood is me-centric, me-centric, me, mine. And there are a lot of people who pray me-centric prayers. It's all about their needs, their belly, their needs. Paul said there are people whose God is their belly in Philippians chapter 3. There are people whose God is their belly. They are mind earthly things. And they are just me, 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 me. So for you to operate in this dimension, you must outgrow that. You know what Paul told the people in the book of Hebrews 12, verse 2, uh, Hebrews 12, 5, verse 12, rather? For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of Elohim, and have become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for is a babe. So it's important for us to understand, not just for those who are called to teach and instruct, those who are called to intercede, you must come to the place where your personal needs is no longer an issue. You are no longer under that kind of bondage or you need this, me, 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 me. You come beyond that. You are a place where truly the Lord can depend upon you in maturity to Take the framework of prayer that the Lord gave. Yeshua gave us a framework in Matthew 6. What is that framework? From verse 5, he says, when you go to pray, don't be as hypocrites. Don't pray to be seen by men. Go, shut yourself in, and as you pray, and shut the door, the Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. You don't try to do brag about your prayer power. Then he said in verse 7, when you pray, don't use vain repetitions as he didn't do, but they think they shall be here for much speaking. So don't just pray, you know, just like that. It doesn't enter your heart. It's not part of you. He said, don't be like them. Your father knows your need before you ask them. Then he began to give us the framework in verse 9. After this man, I pray, our father who art in heaven, recognize that he is your father. He is not just a distant, unknown God. He is our father, and he is in heaven. The throne of grace is at a place he sees everything, he knows everything. Hallowed be thy name, worship. We go to him in worship. We go to him in reverence. And then he says in verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Those who mature, they mature for the kingdom to come. They mature to the point they know that no matter what good the Lord does for them on earth, nothing can compare with the glory of the world to come. And so they, 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 they desire it. And if it is so, they desire that the kingdom will come in their hearts. When Yeshua rules and governs their heart region, and then he says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is part of our work. Spiritual midwives bringing the will of the Father to pass in the air trim. And he said, give us this day our daily bread. That's our need. In this prayer that starts from verse 5 to verse 16, I mean to verse 18, only one verse give us this day our daily bread. You know what? Because he knows that Elohim knows. Then he tells him, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. They say, if you forgive men their trespasses, your Father will forgive you also. You know what? So this gives us a framework. And if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is a framework. And we know it. When you mature, you get to the point. You don't let anything latch into your heart or mind. They talk about fasting. Don't go and try to make people know, hey, this guy is always fasting. No, look at him. No. When you're fasting, even go to extra length to let people make people look at you as one who does fast, so that your father can see you and know. So it's important. We are given the framework of mature prayer by Yeshua. And in the book of 1 Timothy 2, Paul also gave us another framework which mature people know. He says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving in thanks be made for all men. Mature intercessors and spiritual warriors, they pray for all men. Then, for kings and for all that are in authority, all that are in authority. We pray for them so that we may live a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. He says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of Elohim. 
So it is very important. So don't let whoever is your president or prime minister or king or queen, don't let anything he or she does to be so much that you, you are full of bile and offense and anger and always cursing them. No, they are not an intercessor if you do that. So this first point, take note of it, to mature. We are called to mature. You cannot do engage in asymmetric spiritual warfare if you are immature, if you are just there. And so remember, as I said to you, to, when you come into this class, please make sure you write your name, where are you coming from, your city, your country, or your state, your country. It's important so that when we are going through, we'll be able to know the place that are covered in what we are doing. So please, maturity is important. If we are going to fulfill this special assignment the Lord has placed us on earth for. The second one, set point number two, the final degree of intercessory ministry and spiritual warfare is when we embrace the invitation to sonship. There's an invitation to sonship the Lord gives to everyone in the household of faith. Why? The ultimate purpose of redemption is to repopulate the earth ring with sons of Elohim. Just like Adam before he fell. We're told in the book of John 1, verse 11 and 12, he came unto his own, his own received him not, but as many as received them, to them he gave power to become the sons of Abraham, even to them that believe in his name. And in Hebrews 2, 10, for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the caption of their salvation perfect through suffering. So we got to be people who embrace sonship. In, if you mature without embracing sonship, you are going the wrong direction. You are going out of course. But your maturity must lead to sonship. A sense of your identity in the Lord, a sense of your knowing who you are in Him, and who is in you, and a sense in which you can actually take the place of Yeshua. We said this in many of the trainings, and it's so important. You can take His place and ensure that what He began when He came on earth, it's up to you. The Lord wants to use us to fulfill it. So sonship is important in intercessory spiritual warfare. you got to embrace it because it's something he has already done for us at the cross. But you got to embrace it inside of you, your consciousness. Stop looking at yourself as a, as a boy, a girl, man, woman, you know, single, married, single uh, mother, all those labels of men. Look at yourself as a son of Elohim. A son of Elohim is a son of Elohim either in a female or male body. It doesn't matter. How much body you have, it doesn't matter. It's a matter of your mindset. It's a matter of your maturity in Him. So receive that. Number three point is directly tied to that. Sonship is practically proven when we stop judging things, including things to pray for or things to war against, with the five carnal senses, what we see, what we see, what we smell, what we hear, what we taste, what we feel, we got to come to the place where we stop using the five carnal senses to make assessments. If you use the five senses, you fail. Sonship requires that we are not driven by emotions in assessment of our responses to situations. Emotion will betray you. When you're emotional, you may actually be praying those kind of dangerous prayers because somebody did something you don't like and those things may come on and you may just be filled with bile. No, sonship is evidence in being led by Holy Spirit and to pray and war according to the will of Elohim in all situations. So my feelings don't matter. What matters is the will of Elohim. What I think doesn't matter. What matters is what is the will of Elohim. You see, that's what made Stephen to be able to pray for those who were stoning him. Father, forgive them for they don't know. Don't lay it to their charge. Just like his master, he was being stoned and he could pray for them. You see, emotions will betray sonship. Because every time you go into emotions, you have left the high ground of sonship. You are now on the low ground of emotions. 
A lot of people, what is their biggest problem is what we call the super soul. The super soul has a very developed mind, analytical, and analytical, and analytical. So if you want to analyze them, analyze them, and it blocks the ability to hear what Holy Spirit is saying you should pray for, or what you should walk for. And so the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, from verse 5 to 9 and 12 to 14, it tells us that the natural man is the natural mind is enmity against Elohim. And it wants us in verse 12 to 14 to be led by Holy Spirit in all things when we're in the arena of prayer. It's so important, men and brethren. Number four, the sonship enables us to be mindful of our father's estate in the earth realm. In other words, the earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. It's true. There's a fallen world on earth, okay, that Satan is God of. But we should never allow that reality to blind our minds to the reality that this earth is still the loss and the fullness thereof. And he requires his sons, redeemed by the blood, to take responsibility while you're on earth. If he has given you 85 years, of which of them 65 years were in the Lord, Make sure that those 65 days, if you come to sonship, you engage in taking care of the estate of your father. And that includes exerting kingdom influence upon human authorities. You are not, you, you are not, we are not irresponsible to say it doesn't concern us what happens in the society. All we know is let's go to heaven. All we know is just keep ourselves holy. All we know is just to be in church singing and dancing. What happens outside the building, it doesn't concern us. No. You can't, it's an expensive thing to do if you are called to the Ministry of Intercession Spiritual Warfare. The natural realm is influenced from the spiritual. Everything you see in the natural is a function of something that goes on the spiritual. So we need to do what happened, you know, we need to bring in an outcome where, like, um, um, what was it, Daniel, in the days of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar was humble to the point Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged the God of heaven in Daniel 4, 34 to 37. That is why that's, this is really the basis of what we discussed last week as a spiritual cabinet which needs to operate at all levels. The spiritual cabinet should operate at all levels right from foundational level. Communities, even families really. There should be somebody in a family who is traveling all the things Satan is trying to do to destroy families, there should be one or two people in the family who will travail and stand in the gap and war in the spirit and battle until victory is won. Then it should be at the community level. There should be somebody who takes charge of the community. And any living church that has sons of Elohim cannot afford to drive or drive into the community from far, enter the car park, get into the building after jumping up and down. You know what? We enter a car to go back. No. The living churches are going to raise spiritual cabinets who guard the community. Every street should be prayed for by name. Harrier Close, Empire Avenue, oh, Dibana Avenue should be prayed for by name. Spiritual warriors calling upon the Lord concerning all those in that area, that their hearts will be in the hand of the Lord, that they will be tender towards the gospel of the kingdom. Plow their hearts, plow their hearts in the spirit, so that when the uh, evangelism thing go, hearts will already be ready to receive the truth. So streets, avenues, roads, everything, squares, should be prayed for by name. And in the realm of the spirit, the intercessor should be able to contend with every spirit that walk in the community and subdue them in the spirit. And even go, sometimes they go on spiritual prayer walk. Just walk the streets, walk the roads, walk the squares, walk the marketplace, at times drive through, drive round anoint the car, the tire, the tire of the car, anoint it with oil and declare the blood of lamb upon it and just drive around. It's part of spiritual warfare. And this should be done intentionally. This should be done really. Okay, if it's prayer work, anoint the feet of all the intercessors who are going out and they go out, step there according to Joshua 3, 1, 3, whatever the soul of our fish shall tread upon is given to the Lord for a possession. And that is also what 
community level spiritual um, cabinet should do. Pray for whoever is the community head. Pray for people of stature. Pray for the businesses in the area. Pray life into them. When we moved to a place called Elm Park, our headquarters, it was a dying community. Almost everything was going down. Stores were closing down. The community had these interlocking trees that were not cut by the council. By 5 o'clock, you feel you are somewhere in Africa. And brothers and sisters, listen to this. As Pastor Grace would go to work praying, warring, I would go, I would go out praying, warring, and the brethren who began to train the same, began to war over that community impact. You know, things were so bad that there were two primary schools, they closed down one and sold it to people in another borough to use to make it, to build a housing estate. Where our children used to go to school is now a housing estate because they assumed there were no young people, it was an old people community. But as we pray, taking responsibility, you know what the Lord has done? It's amazing. The Lord had done a work out of those stores, only one remaining it was closing town, Woolworths. Today, we have Tesco, we have um, uh, Sainsbury, we have Savers, we have uh, uh, um, another one, you know, about four or five stores in that small community. Today, we have about two GPs, general practice, you know, medical centers. We have about three or four pharmacies in that small community. That's amazing. Amazing. Life has returned. Life has returned to the community. There was a bar, a pub that was, you know, people, all kinds of bowdy people would make noise there, very close to the church. And one day, holy boldness came. We said, we're not going to share this community with a place of sin. Brothers and sisters, we rented that place to hold a service and raise an altar of the Lord and declare that we don't want house of iniquity in this town. A, a, a pub. You know, in the UK, pubs are places where people do all kinds of stuff. Do you know that a few months later, that pub closed? Today, it is Sainsbury. Today. And a nightclub closed down. Today, is a savers. Brothers and sisters, let's stop all this thing of thinking that we are helpless people in the community. We are helpless to do whatever the enemy wants. So, at also at state level, there should be spiritual cabinet, praying over the governor, the state legislature. And then, of course, at global level, a global cabinet. And whichever one your grace is, don't try to beat your grace. Your grace may be to start with the community level or to state level or national level. Stay there. The, in, the global level, it will come with time. The Lord may call you, but if something may grow into, because if you go into it prematurely, you might not be able to handle what can be there. And so, brothers and sisters, it is part of our work to make sure that those in authority, their hearts are brought into the hand of Elohim. He turns it to do his will, as we discussed last week. Where they harden their hearts and close their minds to self-will, they will suffer the just recompense of their time, I mean of their lifestyle, because they will become unpopular. They will have electoral setback. They might lose election. They, or those who become autocrats, They'll be unable to enjoy the fruit of their, their loot. They become autocrats, full of fear, always worrying who is going to kill them. And they can't, they're just all going in fear with armor tanks. What, what is the purpose? You have all the power, all the money, and you can't enjoy it. And of course, those who refuse to take the signal of Holy Spirit and insist on their ways in eternity, they are going to see that they've made themselves very terribly bad. And so, brothers and sisters, the spiritual cabinet, we are going to effectuate it. If you are called to be part of it, praise the Lord. That's wonderful. Come on. Write the application to the uh, visionarymail7 at gmail.com visionary, V-I-S-I-O-N-A-R-Y mail, M-A-I-L one word, lower caps, then the, the num numeral 7 at gmail.com Send the application. We're going to sift through them. We're going to get them all together and look through them and find out whether you are best to operate in a national level or even advise your community level. And if there are those who the Lord wants to use for the, for the spiritual global work, they will come on 
And by the grace of the Lord, everybody is going to find a place where you can operate very well. And I want to tell you, one of the greatest training grounds is at your community level. And of course, if you can make it to the national level or state level, I tell you, you grow exponentially. Because it's going to induct you to a higher realm of consecration you never had. And so, brothers and sisters, I need to remind you, have you signed in your name in the training? Have you signed in where you come from? And please remember, go to the top right of the video. You see three dots. One, two, three. If you click it, it will open. Copy the link and with your finger and put it on any group you belong to. Put it on your page and it's going on. The people will get this training simultaneously because today's training is a little bit open. The one last week was classified. Take note. Take note, those of you who are prayer leaders, not every information is for everybody. There are those who are going to be for a small group of people who are with you, you know them, you have assessed them, and there are those who be for another level, and there are those who are for the masses, so you don't put yourself into any problem. Number five, take note of this. Intercessors who live and walk as sons need to reject, refuse, and nullify all local, national, global tendencies which glorify Satan, glorifies the flesh, and divide the church. Everyone, and listen, the Lord doesn't want us to be hypocrites. In one thing you're okay, in the other thing you miss it. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 26 tells us about walking in the flesh, the need to come out of it and walk in the spirit. And what it is, it tells us that, listen, the flesh, verse 17, lost against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, these are contrary one to the other. You cannot do the things you would. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, hot anger, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, rebellions, and such like. Of which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that there we do so things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. So, part of our symmetric spiritual warfare is to deal with works of the flesh anywhere we are. These include tribalism and racism. Hating people because they look different. Hating people because of their you know, um, race or the tribe they came from. No, you, you cannot take it as an intercessor. You reject it. But on the other hand, you also need to reject counter-racism and counter-tribalism. Because if somebody says, okay, let's say black, some say I'm discriminated against, and then in response, he hates the whites and speaks evil of them, in that case, listen to this, that is counter-racism. Because it's not of the Lord. The one that hated is not of the Lord. The one that is hating back is not of the Lord. It's works of flesh. So what it means, therefore, is that we've got to be careful not to be embrace everything popular or current. You cannot endorse racism as a son of Elohim, neither can you endorse counter-racism. And listen to this. Where people think they are oppressed and we properly pray for them, they'll be able to hand over things to the Lord and he'll fight for them. But when they don't and they go into paganism, sedition, hating authorities, secular humanism, Anarchy, let's destroy, let's burn down, let's destroy everything. When such things are happening, you cannot be involved as an intercessor. You have to back up and say, no, something is like rock here, rot is here, animosity is here, sedition is here. No, you've got to then pray and say, Lord, heal their hearts. Lord, take, put your holy oil to assuage all the pain. Lord, deliver them. They begin to war for the mindset of those who are destroying, burning, making things to be tense because Elohim doesn't dwell in tension. No. So, brothers and sisters, this means we have to be neutral to some of the things that are popular around us. Because if you, after going to pray, you go into talk and you are talking for your race, you are talking for your tribe, you are talking for your people, you know what? We have betrayed the kingdom. So we can't do that. Number six, 
Intercessory teams also need to move from general to specialist roles. This is so important. The more we grow, the more we mature, we learn to move from general to specific roles. And this is so important. This is the spiritual equivalent of the spiritual cabinet. Within every network or church family, there are critical resource persons planted by Elohim, of whom Yeshua said, smite the shepherd, the sheep of scatter. And that includes pastors, overseers, people who have responsibility, or you know, people like heads of networks, of which you are part of the network in any way. You know what? The enemy sets his sight on them. You know, we say, all oh, people are created equal. That is true. But when it comes to assignment, assignments are not equal. Certain assignments have strategic value. They are not more important than others as in ordinary people. But if somebody is taken out by the devil, either by death or by sin or by going into error of, you know, theology, automatically multitudes are affected. Right now, there are people great people there was a man who had the greatest work in europe today he's just doing mockery and jokery on television programs i mean youtube programs in west africa this man took over a city at the height of his being serious with the lord nobody knows what has happened to him you know what all kinds of news have now come out about him what happened? The enemy must have targeted him. He knows that if this man had continued the way he was going, not only did he take over a nation, presidents came to him, governors came to him, mayors came to him, perhaps through him, Europe would have been brought back to Yeshua. He's somewhere there languishing. One other man who is one of the top five worldwide in terms of impact was shown on a video on YouTube carrying something they call a magic wand. We don't know what it is. Turning 360 degrees, asking people to look at the wand, and in two minutes, all their problems, they should talk it to the wand, and they will get their solution. Where did that come from? Nobody knows. If in another place, this man was shown, one of the top five people in the whole world showed, saying that one of the reasons he was brought into this world is to bring world peace. And all the religious groups, that they have solution. You know, you know that's the language of preparing the ground for the one world government, not the one Yeshua will rule, but the one the Antichrist will rule. I can assure you, part of the reason is that people are not praying for that man. People are praying more anointing, do more miracles, more anointing, IJN, IJN, in Jesus' name. You know, West Africans love it, especially West Africans, IJN, more anointing. Listen. Whenever the Lord begins to use somebody, it's not a time to pray only for more anointing. Pray against seducing spirits, both spiritual seducing spirits that can take people off course, both physical seducing spirits that can take them out into sin. Pray against pride, pray against anything. War, if you truly value the work of that person, whether it's a pastor of a congregation, overseer of a ministry, or head of a network, war. Travel for the person, whether it's male or female, it doesn't matter. Young or old, it doesn't matter. Travel. And so Paul regularly prayed for intercession. Paul prayed in uh, Ephesians 6, 19 to 20, For me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. In other words, let me not preach another thing other than that which the Lord wants to do through me, for which I am ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So we need to have strong intercessors assigned to people. Men and brethren, let me give you some instance. In the Reformation movement, where Pastor Grace and I are there, we need to have people, not just those in London, we need to have people across the world who are going to John Prophet Oloma and the people praying to uphold Pastor Grace and I and our children and pray that we will not miss it, we will not be misdirected, that nothing will come in and take us off course, pray and war in the spirit, all attack of the enemy, all manipulation, that the Lord will frustrate it, we should pray. Not only us, we don't work alone. There are principal officers of the commission and our colleagues at Mission Central. Mission Central, Prophet Loma, and the people who are with her in London, they are there 
to undergird the work. We are working together. They are, every one of them in their own lane, they need to be prayed for by name. And Prophet Oloma will supply the names. They need to have people interceding for them daily. Principal officers, someone like Teacher Stephanie, as chief of staff, she's at the intercession of everything we do. Global Missions Board, U.S., she runs the office, the Authentic Kingdom Culture, the uh, TBM program, all that, IMF, and, you know, everything we do, she's at the intersection. So it means there'll be massive satanic attack, and she needs intercessor. She doesn't need people looking at her and thinking, oh, she's everywhere. She's not everywhere. You don't know the consecration she has made in doing this work. What of someone like Apostle Catherine Jones, the director of studies of the master class, massive sacrifice. Her father and mother are aged. She's taking care of them. Her husband, she's taking care of the husband. You know, she has children. She has grandchildren. And she's a worker, a manager in a corporate firm. These things, each of them is enough. So there's a need for enough people who are going to undergird her. And that also some other people who are working closely with us. And they're taking their part. Prophet Oloma needs coverage. I mean, the work she's doing as leader of the ground forces for this work, I tell you, the host of hell are going to let loose. So there's need for people. I'm not talking about one, two, three, four, five. I'm talking about 10, 20 people dedicated, covering her in prayer, covering her family, covering her, praying for her husband, praying for her children, warring. Brothers and sisters, this is so important. And so also, those who work with us, like I said, in Mission Central, Pastor Emilia and all of them, they will need to be intercessors standing on their behalf across the world, praying for them. Then members of the Global Governing Council of IMF, Dr. Cosmos Ilichko, Chairman, and the other ones, Pastor Jeremiah, Pastor Liz for Europe, you know, uh, uh, Apostle Fred Harris and Pastor Kathleen for, for North America, Bishop Stafford and his wife for Africa, you know, the Governing Council prayed for interceded for then the global executive committee those who work with us you know to assist pastor grace tonight to execute the imf mandate all of them by name need intercessors all connected feeding back to prophet Roman what they are praying for where they need extra you know reinforcement also national leaders of imf like uh, uh, apostle you know, Ron Shepard and Pastor Janda in US in USA, uh, uh, Pastor Dupe Adefola and her husband, you know, here in UK, you know, all the national pre presence across the world, Apostle Pat in Zimbabwe, Dr. Alan Mills and his wife in South Africa, all our national presidents, we need to have intercessors covering them and then leaders of the leader of the London Metropolitan Forum, Evangelist Adiola Kintoye, a extraordinary work committed to our trust concerning young people and professionals. Then, like Global Missions Board, you know, uh, Mr. Daisy and her team here in London, you know, Mr. Stephanie and her team in uh, uh, USA, you know, uh, people like um, 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 Minister Pat uh, Chidapwa and Evangelist Chewe in Zimbabwe, you know, Mr. Lindy Way and Mr. Monica and Apostle. Uh, um, uh, 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 yes, in South Africa because the work have to do with the people who are hurting, orphanages, widows. They need coverage so that the Lord provide resources for them to do this work. You know, there are people who are close to us doing special work like Apostle Brenda Jameson, the work we're giving to her, you know, in the, not just the Caribbean, the women's work and all that. They need prayer coverage. National leaders, these people who are officers of IMF and nations, each of them in their families need to be covered. Then coordinators of Global School of Ministry across the world, they need to be covered. This is just like the spiritual cabinet over nations. This is for the spiritual work. And if you are here, you have an overseer, you have a pastor, you have a, somebody in a network you are part of, those people need to be covered in prayer. And it is so important. Men and brethren, we move on to number seven. One of the greatest ways to fight Satan and powers of darkness is to steadfastly pray into manifestation the key pillars of kingdom culture in the church. That is asymmetric spiritual warfare at a very high level. To pray in kingdom culture, 
Because where they are present and are bound, Satan is automatically constrained. Automatically. When kingdom culture is in place. What is it? We must pray in love. As John said in John 13, 34, 35, the new commandment Yeshua gave that we love one another as he has loved us. We got to pray it in. It's part of asthmatic warfare to pray in the spirit of love to be let loose in the church. Like 1 Corinthians 13 says, if we have everything but lack love, we are empty, we are making noise, we have no value. It has to be prayed in. There has to be intercessors who are praying in because charity never fails. Everything else will fail. The charity will never fail. We also have to pray in unity. It's part of kingdom culture. Like John 17, 20 to 22 says that we be one as Yeshua and the Father are one. That kind of unity that is so real, so connected, so powerful that you cannot pluck it out. And the Lord wants us to be people who truly pray for unity to be a part and parcel of the entire church in the nation and globally. Also, we need to pray in forgiveness, the spirit of forgiveness. There's so much legalism in the household of faith. There's so much people holding on. But we've got to pray in Matthew 18, the principle of forgiveness. How many times? 70 times 70. That doesn't mean go and intentionally sin against your brothers and sisters. But that, that we should have the heart to not hold anything against anybody, but to release it. Men and brethren, we plow that in. We pray that in. It's part of kingdom culture. Then manifestation number four, eight point, um, 7.4, manifestation of the spirit of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. As Romans 8, 17 to 19 says, we need to pray it in. Righteousness, right standing, shalom, joy in the Holy Ghost. So that there won't be too much tensions in the place where Children of Elohim are. We got to come to that place where the Lord does it. Then number eight point is on point five. Atmosphere free of sin, like Ephesians four seventeen to thirty two. We need to pray it in in the church. Pray in, pray in with people who have eyes full of adultery. Pray the Lord will reach out that spirit from them. Pray for those who will come with seductive dressing and go to the front of the of the of the of the altar and cross their legs right directly opposite the man of God. When you see such things, it calls for warfare. And the elderly women in the house need to be able to lovingly call the sister and say, Sister, you know what? I, I don't know whether you know that there is a way sisters ought to sit. Okay? And tell them. That's what the Bible says age women should do. So the idea that people can just come anyhow, do anyhow, and we don't bother, mm -mm. it doesn't hold water. I'm talking about those who are members of church, not visitors. And even if people are visitors, if you discern that somebody is possessed with a spirit that's negative, intercessors should be assigned. Two intercessors can go and sit right beside that person, and one this way, one that way, and nobody will know what has happened. And right there, as they are quietly inside of them, the someone is going on. It looks like they're enjoying the someone, but they're praying and warring, releasing, releasing the cleansing fire of the Lord upon this place. And before you know it, the powers in that person are nullified. So the atmosphere free of, of, of sin, also an atmosphere of where compassion, sharing and caring is a lifestyle where people care. Oh, they care, the, the brother or sister, who lost his job, and three months later has not got a job, the little seven is going, there should be people in the church who will bring food items, bring material. If the church has some money, should be able to give him some money to meet up. It's a natural thing. These things need to be prayed in. Otherwise, before you know it, church is concerned with other things, and the people that are in church are missing it. They need to be taken care of. And also, empowerment paradigm. We need to pray it in. That the church will be a place of empowerment, not a place where people come and are dead, dormant, lazy. They are just there and they are sitting there and they are not doing anything. It's a place where the teacher process takes place. We pray it in. We walk it in. Teach, train, equip, activate, release. The overseers and pastors, they can literally speaking, we can walk until they get it. 
their eyes are open. They see that it is part of what needs to happen. That they don't just sit over people, but they empower people. We can pray that in. We can pray in circumstances that will make them to reevaluate what they do. To see whether it's in line with the will of the Father or outside the will of the Father. And people can embrace it. So I hope we are paying attention. And please share the video before we end. When we end, you can share it again. Take your finger, go there, the three dots. If you open it, copy the link, share it to your own page, and that way we can continue. And if you have some questions, you can begin to keep them. And if you want to write them, write them out. The time will come, we're going to try to assess them. Number eight, for us to be able to clear the atmosphere it, and also make the church what it ought to be, number eight, Intercessors need to be persistent in praying for our point of Holy Spirit and manifestation of spiritual gifts in the end time church. Don't complain. Eh? Where is Holy Spirit? No, no spirit here. No, no, no. Pastor. Eh? Da, 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 da. No. Tongue is for prayer, not for gossip. Tongue is for talking to the Lord. Tongue is for warfare. The moment you begin to use your tongue for gossip, backbiting, murmuring, you have nullified the ability to stand in intercession and warfare. So we got to pray that all believers will be filled with Holy Spirit. All. It doesn't matter where they are. Baptist, Presbyterian, don't allow those labels to confuse you. Pray down the anointing. Say, Lord, this is your promise. It's your plan. John 7, 37 to 39, say, if anyone tests, let him come and drink. Father, make your people thirsty. Release your spirit. John 14, 15 to 18, say, if you love me, keep my commandments. I'll pray the Father I shall give another comforter that may abide with you forever. Lord, let it come to pass. John 16, from verse 12 to 15, Yeshua spoke about it. We lay hold of the word and pray and pray until Holy Spirit comes upon the church in waves of glory. Waves of glory. And when he comes, he releases spiritual gifts. Holy Spirit doesn't come without evidence. The evidence that Holy Spirit is at work in somebody is not tongues you speak. It is spiritual gifts. Tongue is just a sign that he came. There are a lot of people back at the tongues. What you receive is power. And the power is the ability to do things that are beyond the norm. Do things that are supernatural. Do things that are powerful. And that's what spiritual gifts do. So 1 Corinthians 12, from verse 1 to the end, speaks of spiritual gifts. We must pray it in. There are div the, uh, Verse 4 says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same Elohim, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all, for everyone's profit. We got to pray it in. That we not just go to church as a theater. Everyone have to have gifts. We have to pray for gifts. Gifts like interpretation of tongues. Gifts like discernment. Gifts like interpretation of dreams and visions. We got to pray it in. We got to pray for gifts like compassion, like showing mercy. Gifts of people, generosity. Pray it in. Where they are in a church, the church will grow. And then in in in, in Ephesians chapter four. Verse 7 says, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Yeshua. We've got to pray it in. Then he says in verse 11, He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. we got to tarry until this is manifested, that the fivefold is manifested. They are spiritual gifts. To equip Elohim's people for the work of ministry. We got to pray each in as part of our work. And 1 Peter 4.10 says, As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim giveth, that Elohim in all things may be glorified in Yeshua, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So we got to pray down, not just Holy Spirit, but the gifts of Holy Spirit that he releases, whatever he is, so that the church will be a living, loving organism. 
not a dry religious organization looking up to a man, but it will be a body activated, functional. We've got to pray that in until it's manifesting fully. Number nine, we have to come to the place where we war in the spirit. We resist Satan, as he says, submit to Elohim, resist Satan, he will flee from you. So we need to pray that Satan is constrained from deceiving saints. When saints are prayed into acceptance of certain fundamental kingdom realities offered by the king. What are they? One of them is Matthew chapter 6, 19 to 34. We need to pray that it shall come to pass that Christians will not be laying up treasures for themselves on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where things break through and steal. That Christians will become heavenly conscious to the degree that they make the Lord sovereign rule of their hearts and trust him to take care of their needs. This needs to happen in the church. It needs to happen that people will not stack up money and money and money and there's things to be done and they sit on their money and they are not releasing it. No, people need to be open to sponsor the gospel in different ways so that the gospel will have free cause. And when it is so, they trust the Lord to take care of their needs, as we said before, and they are not praying gentle prayers so that they seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all other things shall be added to him. To those people and that also means we got to pray that people will accept the invitation of Yeshua to become his disciples in Matthew chapter 12 24 Yeshua said to his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me but whoever will save his life will lose it whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it and that means we got to pray that Romans 12, 1 and 2 will take place, that people will lay their lives down at the altar for the Lord and war for that to happen and pray that their minds will be renewed, that they will not be assessing things by worldly standards but by spiritual standards. That's very important. So as intercessors and prayer warriors, breaking the hold of Satan as God of this world over the lives of saints will enable them to embrace death of self and accept the offer of Yeshua to be his disciples. In other words, it's part of our work in prayer and spiritual warfare so that the apostles and prophets, the evangelists, pastors and teachers can do the actual nurturing, feeding. But if we don't do our work, all they may say may sound like water poured upon rock. And when water is poured upon rock, it doesn't settle. So let's begin to be people who pray for the people. We're getting close to the end of this. Then we'll take some questions. We have just uh, three more to take. And we will take questions after that. And uh, Arise will give us some tools while we take the questions. So, okay, number 10. Those who can function successfully in this dimension of prayers and asymmetric spiritual warfare, they need to be truly dead in Yeshua so that their empty vessels are used by Holy Spirit just as it pleases the Master. In Galatians 2.20, Paul said, I am crucified with Yeshua, nevertheless I live, yet not I. But Yeshua liveth in me, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of Elohim, who loved me and gave himself for me. We need to pray to be there. If an intercessor or prayer warrior is not dead to self, all these things we are saying will be impossible. Because your first instinct is to take care of yourself. So but when you die to self, you can truly trust the Lord to take care of you. And it's very important we realize that in this regard, Galatians 6, 14, Paul said, But Elohim forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of Yeshua, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and now unto the world. When the intercessors and warriors come to this place, their vessels are empty. Just like here, this is water. That's how our vessels are available for him to fill and to use. And we need to come to that place. Number 11, second to the last point, through intercessors and spiritual warriors intentionally travail and stand in the gap for the persecuted church. This is very important. The persecuted church is often forgotten by brethren. Often, nobody remembers them or once in a while they remember them, but there needs to be an intentional, continual, of remembering the persecuted church. What is the persecuted church? 
is in Christians who are in areas of the world where it is almost difficult to serve the Lord openly. They are persecuted. If they gather, they are bought, their gathering places are firebombed. You know, militants from other religions kill them at will. Governments are terrible. Some suffer persecution from governments. Some suffer from other religions who don't want Christianity at all. And they are very active. We find this persecuted church in northern Nigeria, in the Arabic nations, in China, in North Korea, in India, and all the 1040 window nations, the countries that are within the, 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 the um, uh, what's it called, from the equator, you know, they are, from the equator they are 10 degrees and they are 40, you know, encircling from all the way from Africa to Asia. And this window of place, people are suffering. They are killed. Their blood is spilled. Church buildings are bombed. Nobody cares. No justice. No compensation. Because to even be a Christian is deemed to be an affront on the people there. So we need to pray for them. Hebrews 13 verse 3 says, Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them. And them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. We need to pray for them that they will have the right attitude to their pain. We pray for them that Lord uphold them. Let there be no bitterness. Let there be no anger. Let there be no offense. Let them learn to give it up to you. Let them learn to communicate everything to you for you judge righteously. You can take care of them. And we also pray the Lord will bring intervention. It will come from changing the government or changing the ruling class. It could come from anything it pleases the Father. He alone knows. Amen. And so that is number 11. And we now go to number 12. And we will take questions after this. And hopefully we're going to have some uh, uh, keyboard while the questions are being prepared. Okay. Now, number 12. A critical part of our assignment is to cooperate with Holy Spirit in preparing the church to become the radiant, glorious bride of Yeshua, which is fit and ready for the rapture and which hinders manifestation of the Antichrist until the day she's taken away. That's part of what is holding the, the Antichrist from coming now. I believe as a person that the Antichrist is on earth, that has not been revealed. Yeshua was on earth for 30 years and was not revealed until the baptism of John. And if you know Satan, he tries to imitate everything of the Lord because the, at the end of the age, Satan wants to create an evil triune personalities. Satan himself as the dragon, the antichrist as opposite of the Yeshua, and the false prophet as opposite of Holy Spirit. And these things are just getting in place. But because the church has been not as mature as it ought to, people are not seeing certain things. But the Lord is saying, we got to pray in Ephesians 5. 26, 27, that he, Yeshua, might sanctify and cleanse it, his church, with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. As the ministry of the word is taking place, so shall the intercessors and spiritual warriors be praying for the potency of the power of the world to wash away spots of sin, wrinkles of traditions of men, and other such things, so that the glorious church will emerge. And brothers and sisters, when you read Second Thessalonians chapter 2, you know that what is hindering the Antichrist from manifestation is that the church is still here. He says in verse 3 of Second Thessalonians 2, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worship, so that he, as Elohim, seated in the temple of Elohim, show himself that he is Elohim. This is what will happen on earth. A man is going to defile the third temple at Jerusalem, that everything about the temple has been assembled. Everything has been assembled. All that is being waited is the political environment to put things together. And it can come by precast 
technology, putting things together that have been there. Even the oil for the altar has been done. Kosher certified. Animal sacrifices have been done. Kosher certified. The high priest of Israel has been found from the lineage of Aaron. DNA testing has confirmed him. And the clothes have been, the vestments have all been done. It's just somebody who will give them authorization to build the temple. And when perhaps the temple is done, maybe on the day of dedication, somebody will come into the temple and say, I am your Elohim. Israel say, no, the a mere man. We know only one Elohim. And then the great tribulation will come against Israel. He says there that this person opposes and exalted himself above all that is called Elohim or that is worshipped, so that he as Elohim seated in the temple, show himself that is Elohim. Remember not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what we told it, that he might be revealed in his time. Listen to this. You know what we told, that he might be revealed. Something is holding back the manifestation of the Antichrist. He says, verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now let it will let until he's taken out of the way. It is the church that is restraining the man of sin from manifestation. The presence of the church. You know, I don't know about you, but I know that I've seen it, that even big men, they may be smoking. You see a little van, a man cleaner, just coming, they throw away their smoke. There is something about the faith. The church is the salt of the earth and light of the world. Because of the church, certain things can't take place. But the day the church is taken out, human beings will return to the cave world. The atavism, the open killing of people, open sin, there will be no restraint. That restraining factor, the presence of the church in this generation is going to happen. So we got to pray. Spiritual warriors have to engage in intense intercession and travail. The saints will be preserved blameless at the coming of Yeshua. That's what Paul prayed in Galatians 4, 19, my little children, of whom I travel in birth again until Yeshua be formed in you. Then in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2, for I'm jealous with you. I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I've espoused you to one husband, that I may present you a chaste virgin to Yeshua. I would present you. We got to have that clean body to present the people the Lord has put in this generation the kingdom that they will be pure and they will not be squatted. And that also means we got to withstand the negative tears, the negative assignment of tears to ensure they do not choke our lives of true sins, through murmuring, gossip, strife, divisions, rebellions that can distract them. In Matthew chapter 13, 24 to 30, and 36 to 43, Yeshua spoke about tears, that while he, the son of man, came to plant the, the good witch seed on earth, Satan at night, when men sleep, between 12 midnight to 3 a.m., powers of darkness hold their meetings, between 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., they go to smite people with all kinds of strange sicknesses and all things. While men slept, the, the devil goes to sow tears. So in the church today, the nominal church, there's a church within the church, the pure church. And there's also within the so-called church, people, they look like Christians, but they are not converted. Their hearts are not right with the Lord. They have not given their lives to him, but they are just there going through the motions, and their life is choking out in some cases. So Yeshua said, don't pull them out, lest you pull out the real witch. So what do we do in prayer, in warfare? We can begin to blunt the edge of the tongues that it will not choke out the witch that can happen spiritually in the realm of the spirit it can happen in the realm of the spirit we war that tears will not come to choke out life from those who are true christians that they will not miss the rapture they will not miss the sound of the trumpet brothers and sisters you know what the lord has done something in preparing a spiritual warfare people, prayer warriors who can truly pray. I want to say this to you. You've got to stand strong. This training shall not be vain. You've got to make sure you make yourself available so that the Lord will use you. As we have come to the end of this training, certificate of merit will be issued for all 
who did the whole 12. How do we know? We are going to go to each of the um, videos and look at the blog and see whether you blogged. It's not, it's not, oh, more anointing, sir. No, that's not what we're talking about. Oh, <laughs> thank God for you. That's not, we're talking about blogging what you receive. Just as you've seen two people during the week, Apostle Jackie in England and uh, our sister um, uh, Sima in Dubai, you see how they have blogged. And many brethren have seen, many brethren who have blogged, but those two were very detailed. Blog to show you receive the truth in the tea training. And we thank the Lord for you. And by the grace of the Lord, by his grace alone, we will check out and then give you a simple test. If you pass it, we will receive and check out and mail to you by email your certificate of merit for going through the training. And we thank the Lord. And we're going to let you know what will happen. Sometimes we're going to have Prophet Oloma. Sometimes we're going to have... Uh, um, some of the people that work with her to come and minister to you through this platform and whenever Pastor Grace gets through and is truly certain the Lord may give her some things to give to you, she'll come along and, ref and, and deliver it. We're going to have a virtual graduation service where you receive, when you receive your certificates by email and confirm you receive it, we're going to have a virtual graduation service where we're going to release you to serve and by then if the Lord leads you to be in the uh, in the spiritual cabinet, we will have set everything in order and decide those who are going to serve over regions, depending on the number of people. We have people from about 47 countries in this task force. If we can start with all those nations, that would be wonderful. Then the global task force will take care of everything up there. Arise, will you come over here and do some, uh, this thing while we take some questions. Come over here. Amen. Uh, so, brothers and sisters, we want to take some questions. Don't take them back, okay? Don't take back the questions. Let's get your question while our rise gives us some. Today is her bad day, by the way. Wonderful, wonderful. Pastor Grace wrote such a beautiful tribute, and uh, I'll be posting it. Uh, she's been, she's the, the keyboardist in the church, and uh, she allowed Destiny to be doing the keyboard here in the Arise online, so that she would do the jitter. You know, that was gracious of her. Elect also does the keyboard. They allow Destiny to have it as a little baby. Oh, Lord, the Lord is wonderful in helping us. So, Elect, can you uh, direct that to her before I uh, listen to this? We want to give a few minutes. Let's arise, do some, you know, play on it while you write your questions. Whatever the questions are, write them, and Elect is going to help us to get them. Amen. Amen. And those who are here, you can also um, write out your questions. Amen. Thank you so much. Arise. We're going to pray for you. Don't go yet. You know, your bad days today. Uh, I like your mommy to, to pray for you. You've been doing so well. And they say, Happy birthday. Arise. I see some people. In being 
neutral. Somebody says, as intercessor relating to issues, does that mean one cannot be involved in all issues? Very good question. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. To be an effective intercessor, it is important not to be so tied with issues or people. Heads of state, governors, whatever, don't be so tied for or against. Don't be so tied to the person to the point where his sins become your sins. And don't be so tied with those who hate him so much that everything he does is not good and therefore you are literally fighting always. It's always better to be neutral. But there may be some things you see, some social issues in the society that you know matter to you and that are right and proper and you can actually invest in them or promote them without necessarily getting into anything that is negative. That is possible. Okay, so I think that answers your question. And if I didn't answer it, please let me know. Okay, so who else can uh, give us any other question? Elect is anyone? There's one here. Eh? There's one here. There's one. Please read it out. How okay, do? sorry. You've taught Holy Spirit is evidence of tongues and not a gift. Are there other signs of evidence of Holy Spirit present? No, listen. Holy Spirit is a gift himself. It's a gift of the Father that comes to us. But at the point when he comes, he displaces our reasoning, displaces our tongues to come forth in tongues so we know he's come. That is the general application of evidence that is come. But when it comes, there are many gifts that come with him. There are many gifts. In Romans 12, from 3 to 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and Ephesians chapter 4, we see some of those gifts. And some others are what we find in the book, Spiritual Gifts, and I want you to read them. It's very important to read them. And I don't know whether that answered your question. In other signs of his presence, now, you know, this, this is the commonest one. There may be specific things the Lord prefers to come, okay, shaking of the body. You know, I'm not talking about all these fleshly things, the body shaking, it is possible. But don't take shaking as sign. It could be for somebody, okay? You know, quaking of the body or, or, or certain goosebumps or all that. Those are not universal signs. The one universal sign is the tongues that come and by the grace of the Lord, you know, uh, we stay on that universal sign, okay? Amen. Yes, order, uh, elect, give me the other one. Keep some questions coming, a few more minutes and then we'll leave. How can we know that we are cooperating with Holy Spirit? How can we know we are cooperating with Holy Spirit? Very good question. One of them is this. There will be this peace that passes all understanding in us. That we know we are not struggling, striving. There will be this peace, shalom. There will be this knowing in our spirit man that we are in the will of the Father. There will be this sense of right standing with the Father. And we are not going to be struggling in the flesh, swimming against the current of life. We are not going to be struggling, swimming against the current of life because we know we are cooperating with him because as elites we are following. We are not swimming opposite with him. He's not walking this way and we're going that way. Most of the issues people have that lead to a lot of crisis has to do with struggling against him. And so when he leads us, we find his peace, we find a knowing, we find the yieldedness of our spirit man. There's no striving against his will. Amen? Yes, my brother. Will it be possible to cover the one someone has missed or to have the whole 12 trainings as a pact no we don't we won't be able to do that is is a job of every one of you just go to the master uh, the this classroom go to the top you see where it says photos click it it will open and then look for the uh, uh, look for the videos and then you can look at the video take it and when you take the video and you study it and give the questions, you can ask your, I mean, you can then blog along. And so it's all there on the group. If it's not there, look for it. It's just three months, look for it, you'll find it. We started the last weekend of March, it us in a, the last weekend of March, we started and every Saturday since then, 
the last weekend of March. So, so and then um, Apostle Jackie asked, how do we avoid people copying us wrongly? As in, I know an apostle who used to go and enjoy the sea in the morning with a hat on. Brother started telling him how blessed they were wearing a hat and thinking he was praying. He was very prayerful, but that was just his time in the sea. <laughs> this last sounds very interesting. <laughs> how do we avoid people copying us wrongly? Listen to this. First and foremost, don't try to understand that we are who we are 24-7. So if we are who we are 24 7, let's also take note that as the Lord elevates us, people look up to us. So we avoid anything that we we'll do that can send the wrong signal. And those who copy wrongly, they are wrong to copy wrongly. They should have asked a question. Sir, I see you wear your hat in the morning. What's going on? What's going on? Ask question. If you are going to be an intercessor, don't just take things and face value. Ask questions, inquire of the Holy Spirit, and ask people, and by the grace of the Lord, you are going to understand. Amen? Okay. Uh, somebody, Pastor Johnson says, Apostle John, God bless you. I've seen your writings and heard your saying always about Holy Spirit, but not the Holy Spirit. Can you please clarify the difference? <laughs> Pastor Johnson, look at this. It's just a simple matter. One year, as I was walking with the Lord in the world, a time came, the Lord showed me, you don't say the Jesus, the Yeshua. You say Yeshua Hamashiach. You know, you call Yahweh our Father. You don't say the Yahweh. So, we realize that to foster the reality that Holy Spirit has a, is a person. is not an it. is not an... He's not a strange object. He's not an impersonal object. So I began to say, Holy Spirit. That's the reason. And thank you that you asked that question by the grace of the Lord. That's really why uh, 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 we did it. Just to, the reality that is a person. is a personality. The third person in the Godhead. So we don't just go talking about death. As if he said it, you know. Amen. Okay. Apostle Jackie, you may want to do that for us. The links to each teaching in a Google Doc, where we don't often use, uh, we can use some notes at times, but at times it's not exhaustive. At times it's exhaustive, it all depends. So if you can transcribe them for us and put in a Google Doc, we'll appreciate that. Amen. All right. So, yeah, let's get orders. Elect, is there another one? So, yeah. Uh -huh. Is the fivefold also reflected? As in church in an intercession ministry, can an apostle be an intercessor, or rather, should all apostles also be intercessors? Okay, um, it says, can the fivefold be reflected in intercession? Should all apostles be intercessors? The answer is no. Intercession and spiritual warfare is a calling. If you have the calling, you have it. So leave your, leave your. Don't let your mind be hung up, I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet, I'm this or that. No, if you hang up there, you may not be able to be an intercessor. Be there as intercessor. Be there, pray, war, just go on. The only thing is this, who you are is who you are. If you're an apostle, you are going to operate with apostolic mindset. You are going to likely to raise more apostles. More apostles. You're also going to raise more intercessors if you put your apostolic grace to work. If you put your prophetic grace to work, you'll be able to bring prophetic counsel to the people. If you're an evangelist and you're an intercessor, you'll find that you raise intercessors to go and, you know, invade territory, take territory, and win souls, you know, by the grace of the Lord. So it, there's nothing that says if you're an apostle, you can't be an intercessor. No, it's a calling. It's a calling. In spite of your position in the fivefold, if you are called, take your place and go forth and the Lord will use your mind to you. Amen? Amen. So, any other question, please? How do we war in the Spirit? How do we war in the Spirit? Very good question. There are a number of ways we war in the Spirit. Number one is, when you are praying, and praying with your mind on, your, revel your, I mean, your capacity on, you are praying and praying and praying and making your case, and decreeing and declaring, there's a time you can get to, Holy Spirit takes over, 
and brings forth the words, okay? And there are two ways to this. One, he can, he can give you tongues and tongues of heaven that the Father hears, the Father knows what is the mind of the Spirit and you use it and the tongues can begin to confuse Satan, confuse the powers of darkness. You can pierce through them, you can decimate them, you can dismantle what they do. Tongues can be a powerful instrument in spiritual warfare. Actually very powerful. So also, you can pray in the Spirit <clears throat> when you come to the extent of your knowledge and you are just there and Holy Spirit is giving you the words. You are, you are not necessarily praying in tongues, but you are being inspired in real time, real time inspiration. Just like those who preach, there are those who can preach in the Spirit and those who preach by their natural senses. Those who preach in the spirit, they go to the pulpit. The Father didn't allow them to take any notes. They just go there and it's begin to pray. Holy Spirit takes over, begins to release words, natural language that they normally use. But everything they are saying was not from their brain, but it was coming by inspiration of Holy Spirit speaking through them in the natural language others hear. So you can war in the spirit and it involves tongues. You can war in the spirit, it didn't involve tongues, but it involves inspiration. Whichever one, it's acceptable to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Okay, while we take the next question, remember our pattern. You are going to write one word that describes how this impacted you, this 12-point teaching today. And number two, you write a summary of this teaching today. Don't go until you've done it. You know it's our pattern. One word. What is that word? And two, one word that describes it, and then sometime during the week, we'll just bring out an assessment form, maybe a poll on this group. You assess how the teaching came, how you receive it, presentation, you know, whatever it is. Critique me if you if you have anything wrong. Please, you have, have liberty. You are not going to, there's no sanction to you. Write honestly and truthfully. How can we improve for next time? What should we do better? Write it on. That one will come. You're going to be given opportunity to do that. Maybe in the next, between now and next week, it should be coming out. So please, we'll appreciate that. But for today, write one word. How do you describe this? Then on, after that one word, what did you receive? What was the impact of this training on you today? You know, can you give me, you know, today we wrote about 12 things, but can you write seven of them that truly open your eyes? truly touched you, truly seven of them that have made a difference. And you know what? By the grace of the Lord, if you believe the Lord is calling you to be part of a spiritual cabinet, send us that note to visionarymail7 at gmail.com. We're going to put it all together and we're going to encourage you to pray for those who you lead, who lead you, whatever they may be. Amen. Okay. What other question? Elijah, any other one? Okay. Uh huh. Let's see one more time. All right. I think we, I think we we've, we've got it. Also, brothers and sisters, we we thank the Lord for you for the questions you asked. We'll try to look up uh, whether there's anything where we 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 didn't get any question. So please, if we missed it, write it down. We're going to visit here and come to you. And I want to say to you, please, brethren, remember to pray for Mission Central. Please, pray for Mission Central. There's something the Lord wants to do in the air train with Mission Central London. The people he brought together, Pastor Grace and I, Mr. Uh, Prophet Oloma and the others, is the reason he brought us together to model something in this generation and to be used by him to activate grace in other believers across the world. And Mission Center is not just those in London, those who work with us, you know, uh, when the U.S. and other places who are strongly involved in this mandate, remember to pray for them. And we're going to assign you, if you are available, to pray for some of the things you need to pray about and people you need to pray. We love you dearly. I listen to this. I believe the Lord is going to do something with this training. I believe that the air trim will not remain the same when this training is put into practice. I remember that we will definitely see the Lord advance the kingdom 
in our generation. And I'm going to pray for you. And then Prophet Uloma will go to the line and pray to round it up. I'm going to pray. Can you stretch out your hand to the Lord right now? Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We worship you. We adore you. What a privilege to have you as our Father who is in heaven, on the throne of grace and mercy. Lord, we come to you by the way of the blood. We acknowledge that this training has been by you alone, by your spirit, when the world was in confusion, utter confusion, concerning COVID-19. You said to us, there shall be no loss. You said to us, set up the 24-7 line and the Facebook line. You said to us, train the people, train the people. Father, here we are. This training has taken place. Lord, we bring ourselves before you that this training shall not be in vain. Your very purpose shall be fulfilled, Heavenly Father, that you will inspire everyone. You will empower everyone. You will activate grace in everyone. You will empower everyone to operate beyond where they were before they started. This training will produce fruit that will endure to the return of the king. And Lord, you will from yourself, you will by yourself, reap unto yourself uh, a, a, a company of intercessors and prayer warriors who you will imbue with wisdom and understanding that they will literally be your battle axe in the earth dream. And you're going to use every one of us who is involved and those who are in the class and those who watch the training video later. You use us to beat back the frontiers of darkness, to resist Satan successfully, to bring down all powers of darkness, and to enlarge your kingdom, and prepare the way for the return of the King of Kings, and to bring the church to that place where it's ready for the rapture. Lord, I pray that none of us will miss it. None of us will stumble away. None of us will fall by the wayside. But Lord, you will strengthen us with all might. You will empower us. You will supply grace for us to fulfill all that you have appointed unto us. And each of us, you enable us to fulfill our years in the earth dream unto the coming of the Son of Man. Lord, we lift up before you, Pastor Grace, and use as a point of contact that every one of us, Lord, shall be full of health and strength for the work that you have given to us to do. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. Lord, we lift up your daughter. Arise before you. Thank you for the way you are giving her a holistic training in all dimensions of life. Lord, strengthen her with all might as she's ready to go to the university this September. Lord, clothe her with your glory. And Lord, cause her to excel, oh Lord. And all her siblings favor in the U.S. who is coming back in August, elect in the university, Praise who is going to college and destiny, who is going to unite, Lord, in a special way. Be with them, O oh Lord. And we pray that you use them as a point of contact to all children who are born in homes where your ministers are. That they all will discover the purpose you have for them, and they will run with it, and it shall be well with them. Lord, preserve all families. Let the blood speak, O oh Lord. Let every plan of the enemy be disconnected. Every gathering and association will nullify them. And we say, Lord, strengthen your people with all grace, O Lord. Father, release all allocations for the assignment of your people. And let your people never have cause to relapse into flesh. Be exalted, O Lord. Thank you, Father. We pray that the day will come when you will do that work you want to do. And mainstream this work that on all television on cable, on satellite, on different media, these truths will fill the atmosphere. Those who have been trained, Lord, we now ask you to empower them to go and train others. Give them the grace to go and raise intercessors and prayer warriors in asymmetric spiritual warfare. Give everyone the enablement to be able to do that, according to 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua's mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Before we leave, let me say this as I was praying that came, Second Timothy 2 2. Each of you want to give you an assignment. Look for five people or seven, five or seven, and train them with what you have learned within your loop of influence. Take note of them, create a Facebook group, 
or a WhatsApp group or any other means of communication, train them. Five to seven people reproduce after kind. Five to seven each of us. Let's do that and see what the Lord will do with us. I believe that the Father wants to literally set the entire earth tree on fire. We're going to give you further instructions by next week. Um, you know, during the week, we're going to write them out in posting form. And Prophet Olama and the team of leaders with how will begin to release prayer points as the Lord leads prayer points. And at times, she and the leaders will also speak to you. Amen. Now, thank you so much, Elect, for being with us on video. Uh, the Lord is your strength. Thank you. You've done a very beautiful work. Bye-bye.